the GAA was founded in Hayes' Hotel in Turles. And that really was the, the kernel of it all, you know? And um, then you had some, you had some great, uh, the hurling was so strong then, now you hear a giant of a man, that stadium is called after him above, the famous Tom Simple. Now, Turles Ashfield is out of, they used to be the old blue, Turles Blues. That's the, that was they were originally called. And then they changed the name to Turtle Sarsfields, you see. So Tom Simple was a leading figure, or oh, giant of a man. You knew, you knew him. Oh, personally, should I just be, play, uh, there was two of his sons pl playing with me on the old Sarsfields team, Johnny and Tommy. Tommy Simple, I called after Tom himself, and Johnny was playing with, never made the county, but were good club men. It was all first time pulling. I remember there was about to play, 10 minutes to run, and the ball never touched the ground. It was all ground hurling that time, except you caught it in flight or it hopped in front of you. But there was, there was none of this thing. But anyway, I'll tell you, you'll be counting your fingers. If you put down your hand for a ball, you'll be counting your fingers. You know what I mean? So anyway, so, oh yes, it was a pure thriller. Now, and a uh, draw, a draw was the most deserving. I we played full back one day in, in in Limerick, and he was full forward. Oh, he was a dangerous fellow. But um, we had a small little goalie at that time in '45. Small lemonade, Jimmy Mar of Borland, a small little lad now, and he used to wear a big cap, a big cap, you know. And uh, the next thing, that time, you see, it was. The, the forwards would, would go back, and and, and Mackey came back now, and I was I was full back, and uh, Carnally was injured. The usual full back, he was injured, and they didn't want to chance him. His knee, so a real full back anyway. But uh, so he ran back now before the ball was thrown in at all, and he looked in over my shoulder. You see, to Jimmy, oh God, no, he says to me. Vicky said, did you, did you bring the little goalie at all today? You see, one, he, only, he only wanted to lift Jimmy. And Jimmy used to lose the... Jimmy used to run out and base him across stairs with the hurley and all. You know, feel, but that's what Mackie wanted, you see. You know? So, the boy, maybe there'd be a goal, gosh, and Mackie would run in and he'd tap Jimmy on the back and he'd say, Jesus, Jimmy, that was an easy one. You should have stopped that one. Up here, we played Borussia in the county final, the Kennys and all that. And... The Dan, he presented that cup the first day to the Superior County Board. And he, he personally, I, I'm the only captain that he ever presented the cup. Well, normally he wouldn't be home, he'd be away, but he was he was in Tullis for, for this county final. And I'll show it to you there now, and he, he, he presented me with the cup, and Archbishop Kinan that time here, and... Uh, I tried to put, I had my arm around him here, you see, and, and the cup. So we have a great character there now. He's the centre council representing Noel Morris and Boris Kane. You see, he's representing Sip. And the first night he came in, he saw this photograph. Well, Mickey, he says, you're the first man I would say ever left a hand on Dan Breen and lift to tell it, he says. You know, I just... <laughs> but um, where we stayed for that 45 All Ireland was Black Rock College. You see, they wanted to get the team. They didn't want the teams that time. Lahey was terribly shrewd. He wouldn't go to any hotel in the city because they'd be all in and they didn't have the hotel. And then, you, you, as, you, as you know, it would be too temp tempting for players to, to, to get a drink or something like that. So, we, um, um, Lahey knew the president, I don't know what he was at the time, of Black Rock College. Then the students would be gone home and the college would be idle. So that's where we stayed. We went up on a Saturday morning and into Black Rock College and stayed there and then in for the match. And then after the match, then on the Sunday night, we'd always stay in Barry's Hotel. So it was a landmark there at that stage, you know. And, um, but, uh, um, 
then things, you know, uh, but then we'd have, uh, we, we, we'd be going down, then we had special places then. There was great pub. Now, I know the driver here, the famous Tommy Moore. He played with Dublin. He had a great, he had a pub now, which was a landmark in Dublin. Yeah. And with the cup would have to be brought down on a Sunday night there, and I needn't tell you the rest. You know, me met Cork in the semi, the semi-finals was. Yeah, I think the sem semi-final. So the first day, a draw. As you know, I was telling you, and uh, the second Sunday, a draw, and they decided then they'd play the extra half hour. And you mentioned yourself there now about uh, uh, Jim Barry had the Cork team sitting out the scorching sun. It was unbelievable. The grass was, was actually burnt. That particular summer, it was unreal. And... Uh, so I, I told you then about the famous Blake brothers that were masseurs out, and they brought down this churn of spring water. And we were brought into the dressing room, stripped down, and got sponged with this, which was supposed to be a famous spring. So I can see the hair story if you like. But anyway, we got uh, sponged down. Then those Blakes that had this own concoction, wintergreen, olive oil, you name it. You stick out, yeah. So, rubbed us up. We came out for the last half an hour and Cork didn't know what he hit him. So it was stupid because if you're after sweating there and you sit down there, for, you, you, you get stiff naturally, you know. We played a game against Cork, a, a, a National League game, we played down in Cork, and we had the, the, the little goalkeeper, as I told you, little Jimmy. And uh, anyway, as me hollow hair you say, there was a shamazel in an hour goal, anyway, and little Jimmy was bundled into the back of the net, and they put the cap down here, big cap, and they put the cap down over his eyes, you see? So when you, uh, as me hollow you say, when the dust settled, you see, and he got up and, and he lifted up the cap, and here he saw Lynch running out of the 21, you see. And he followed him out of the 21. You can add, Jack told this now himself several times before. He followed him out and he left the boss of the hurley under his wine pipe there. And by Jesus, Jack, he says, if you come in there again, he says, and there'll be another by-election in Cork, he says. You see, when Jack Lynch got into the doll first, was on a by-election, you see. So you, there'll, be an, there'll be another by-election, he says. There, there was a great, um, it was 18 years, there was an 18 year spell. So th there was a great character, I know did you know, I must tell you, uh, Dennis Conroy. And he, they made him a chair, he was, he was nearly on crutches when they made him chairman of the Cork County Board, right? So now he had a son married here in the town to a pub there, Glasheen's pub, which was up the factory road. And he used to come up every weekend and he'd stay there, you know, for the matches. So, uh, we, we, they were there this Sunday night anyway, and the team was after coming back, of course, for beating. So, uh, Conroy was there and he was drinking away. And these crowd of lads came in real late about around. They were cursing and swearing the way they were held up in the traffic coming down from Dahl Island, you know. I took a, he said, it took us six hours, he said, nearly to get down. And Dennis was there with the pine. Well, sure, he says, it wasn't too bad. He says, it took you 18 years to get there. He said, <laughs> <laughs> you know.